Chef Pennington here. Today we're doing potatoes au gratin, also known as palms dauphine. If you guys are French, we are going to be making a classic bechamel sauce, which is the key to this dish, which offers lots of wonderful uses. It is a mixture of a roux and milk that comes together in a creamy, velvety sauce. Things like pot pies that creamy insides make them bechamel. Roulades often have a little bit of a creaminess on the inside. Bechamel, any type of nice plated creamy sauce. And then a bechamel turns into something called a Mornay sauce. That's how we make cheese sauce, guys. Totally cool. So lots of uses for a bechamel sauce, also called a white sauce. Those are on my mac and cheese sliders. I'll have a, a link below. You guys got to check that out. A great use for bechamel. So here's our ingredients. We're going to use high quality butter, some flour, some whole milk, some nutmeg, we're going to use half of an onion, and a cool ingredient, some cloves. And this is a very traditional, classic French bechamel. So we're going to start off making our roux. We're going to get some butter in there. We've got four tablespoons. We're making a bechamel. So usually a roux is equal parts flour and butter. In this case, since there's a good bit of fat inside of the milk, we're going to use five ta four tablespoons of butter and three tablespoons of flour. Bring them together. It's going to create a lighter roux instead of a thicker roux, which is cool. It's going to give us a little more time to cook the sauce and let the flavors that we're going to add to it get into the sauce. They're going to kind of steep together and get happy. So what I'm doing right there is I'm cooking out the flour. If you don't do this process and you just pull it together and start adding milk, you're going to get a little bit of gritty graininess. So it's very important at that point to cook out the flour and that's done while making the roux. So cool. So we're going to start off there by putting about a third of the milk and let everything come together and get happy. Once we start noticing a little bit of thickness, we're going to add the rest of the, the milk in there. And then we're going to stir, stir, stir. We're going to notice it's going to try to thicken on us. We're on medium high heat right now. And we're going to go ahead and finish and bring it up to the soft boil, which is where it just starts breaking the surface like that. We're not trying to scold the milk. And then we're going to stir, 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 and it's going to thicken. That's what the heat does. It reacts with the roux and causes it to thicken, which is cool. So here's a really classic ingredient for this, nutmeg. Nutmeg is delicious. It puts a very fragrant note in there. And when it comes to bechamel, something that can be an elegant sauce, this is one of the key ingredients. So it's more delicate. The, the mace is the outside part of the nutmeg, and that's what we're going to get most of right here. It's a lighter flavor. It's not as strong in flavor forward as full-on nutmeg. So something to consider. If you just have nutmeg, no problem. Um, this freshness just, it's this full-on classic, you know, the way a chef would do it. So nutmeg's pretty cheap. You can usually find that in your bulk aisles. It's, uh, it's available nowadays. Really cool ingredient, guys. All right. Bay leaves are classic too. You could add them. I think it adds, I think it changes the flavor too much. I don't, I don't use them myself, but that's what we're looking for. We want to see that it's thickened and it'll coat the back of the spoon. That's the viscosity we're going for. So here's what you would do first before you even think about making the sauce is we're going to prep our onion and we're going to use clove. Once again, a very classic ingredient here. I think a lot of folks on television don't make a classic bechamel, but we're doing classic today. So the very tip of the clove, that's where all the flavor is. My chef in culinary school said, you never use that part because it's too strong and it'll overpower the dish, the sauce. And I totally agree with him here. So go ahead and pull those little end pieces off and we're going to use seven of them. It's a fairly strong flavor. We don't need a ton of it on a half of an onion. Now with the heat off, key off, we're going to put this in upside down and we're going to cover it. Now the sauce is still warm. We just turned the heat off. We're going to, the sauce is going to continue to thicken and those flavors are going to get in there and it's going to be really cool. It's going to take about four or five minutes to let everybody get happy there. Okay, it's time to make our potatoes au gratin. So what does au gratin mean? It means to shred or grate. And that's where the cheese or breadcrumbs can be applied to the top. And that's what au gratin means. And then we put it under a broiler and give it a little bit of color. And that's where that beautiful top of your gratin comes from. You bake in the oven. Towards the end, you turn on the broiler and let that color just set in. And keep the door cracked so you can keep an eye on it to make sure it doesn't burn. Because it could burn fairly quickly. But that's one of the keys. It'll take on color as it, as it cooks in the oven, too. So potatoes. What kind of potatoes should we use here? Lots of choices. There's over 200 types out there. But we're going to use a russet. The reason we're going to use a russet is it's got the right amount of starch in it. And it also likes to take on flavor and suck in our beautiful bechamel we took so much time to make. So we're going to take our casserole dish. You could use whatever size you guys like. Get a little bit of bechamel on the bottom. What that's going to do is just help the potatoes not stick or burn. 
and then we get to use some cheese. We're using Swiss here today. Classically, Gruyere cheese is used. Swiss and Gruyere are in the same family. Gruyere is just a little more expensive, or maybe a lot more expensive, and it ages longer, and it has a deeper depth of flavor, and it's a little more nutty. So it does bring more flavor to the table. So, you know, save money or go all in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to shingle our potatoes. When you cut your potatoes, you guys could use a mandolin, which are fairly inexpensive nowadays, just offers really even cuts. Or take a knife and just take your time and try to make them fairly thin. They don't have to all be the same size. And then we're going to shingle our potatoes, get a little besh, a little bit of our cheese in there, a little salt and pepper, and just go all the way up to the top. So I use three potatoes here. I didn't need all three of them. But it's better to have a little more potato than not so you don't run out while you're layering. Then get your bechamel on the top there. And what we're going to do, see right there, that's why we left the skin, portion of the skin on. It offers a little bit of presentation. Plus, a lot of the health elements of a potato is in the skin. So on a cookie sheet, these could bubble over. Add a little more cheese on the top. That's what's going to help with our beautiful gratin coloring. Into an oven. And we're going to cook it for 45 minutes to an hour or until it's done. That's the key, until it's done. And then once you think it's close to done, that's when you put it under the broiler and get that beautiful caramelization on the top from our cheeses. And we've created a classic, traditional potatoes au gratin. Really delicious, guys. A little bit of chive, and you guys are set. And I'd say bon appetit to you. Hope you guys really enjoy it. Come join us on social media. We'd love to have you. We'll have all the links below. Go ahead and subscribe. Hit the like button if you liked. We'll have all the information and much more about Potatoes of Groton on the website. And you guys take care.